Now we have a video. It's my friend and my brother, Robert Key. He's one of the church planter residents. Yeah, let's give it a hand. We've, we've been together in this journey since February, and he's going to share today with us his story. So I'm excited for that. Thank you, church. My name is Robert Key, and I am a recovering pastor's kid. No, not really. I mean, I am a pastor's kid, but it wasn't that bad. Um, I actually grew up in Southern California until I was about 11, uh, and then my dad actually did become a lead pastor. And then we went up to Northern California, and we have always been in some form of ministry. My parents were super active in church, and for us, that was just, it's part of life. And so as I grew up, I just really started to go through some things, um, some severe depression, some real pushback on my faith. And what I had to do is I had to really claim my faith as my own and start walking it out. God has put it on my heart for a long time to be in ministry. Every job I've ever taken um, and I've ever done, uh, my wife and I have always agreed that as long as we can do that and do ministry. If not, I have to find a job that allows me to do ministry because that is our heart. In, in my growing closer to the Lord, I just had such a desire to honor God, and I in no way wanted to dishonor Him. And so I always viewed the pastoral office in, in, a, in a lofty way and not in an unhealthy way, but knowing that when you take on that position, people are entrusting their lives to you to, in a way that you're able to shepherd them. Uh, ultimately, Jesus is the, is the good shepherd, and we're just under shepherds. But there is a very high responsibility and so I never wanted to dishonor God or hurt people. Um, and throughout the course of that, it still happens. But for me, that was one of the things that I just always wanted to support the guy. So for me, uh, I chose to help pastors that maybe didn't have the staffing to be able to be helped. So I, I walked into posi positions of uh, worship pastor for almost 15 years. During that time, I also did associate pastoring, assistant pastoring, youth pastoring, executive pastoring. I did all the peripheral pastoral positions, um, but continued to run from the call. And people would always say, oh, I think you should pastor. I'm like, well, I am pastoring. Uh, but for me, it was very much just God, I want to honor you and I don't want to... I, I was basically in my heart trying to protect God from myself. <laughs> and when we moved to Indiana, God had really put it on our heart that He was taking us into a new season and we moved here. We moved here without a job. Uh, we just knew that He was calling us here and so we did and we really felt that He said, move and I will provide. Um, I don't recommend that for everybody, but for us He really has. Um, and he's just been so faithful and we knew that he has a calling for us here even not knowing what it was And so with that I was just on my face before the Lord crying out of what he had for us next and I just I was weeping because he said you know what I've called you to do, but you refuse to do it And so in that moment I felt him say At what point does it become disobedience? and so I laid it all down, I was so broken. And I said, God, you can take it all. Take my job, take my family, take my identity. Even surrendering the thought that I was somehow protecting God from me. And in that, while I was in my office, on my face before God, just praying that I saw myself at the foot of the cross holding on and I was weeping. And he said, if you can stay there, I can use you. And so in that moment, and from there forward, I just started seeking God. And he gave me 1 Corinthians 2, 1 through 5, where it says, And when I came to you, brethren, I did not come with superiority of speech or of wisdom, proclaiming to you the testimony of God. For I determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power so that your faith would not rest on the wisdom of men, but on the power of God. And for me, that has just become so real that it's not about, I knew that my salvation did not rest in my hands. It was because of the work of Christ, but also even the ministry that he chooses to use me in is in his hands. And as long as I will submit myself to him and stay at the foot of the cross, humbled before him, he can use me. And my wife and I have just, that has been our heart and he's just been pouring into us a vision for uh, a ministry that is just 
so relational and that we can disciple people because without relational ministry, we believe it's so hard to be discipled. And so for us, we want to relationally minister to people and create an organism, a structure where people can be discipled relationally. And that's our heart. And we're excited about that. Um, it took us a long time to get there, um, doing all this ministry, running from <laughs> what we knew. But, you know, God's grace is so is beautiful because he chose that even while I was running, he was preparing me. For all those years, he was preparing me for this moment, and I truly believe that. Um, so thank you so much for letting me share, and we're excited for what God is doing.